We're here in uh, New Orleans, Louisiana in uh, early August 2001 with Woody Wager. Uh, Hi, Jerry. The infamous Woody Wager. Uh. And, um, but people will probably want to know more than that. So, Woody, can you tell us a little bit about where you were born, raised, family, and uh, eventually how you got into reporting? I was born in Brooklyn, New York. At, uh, when I was born, I was zero years old, but when I was 18, I went to reporting school, in, <laughs> small school in Brooklyn, Crafley and Brown. And uh, we had some wonderful teachers in that time, but uh, you asked me to reflect, and I can reflect easily because it was my mother and father who steered me. And it was either going to culinary art school to be a chef, and uh, we found out that to be a chef, to become a great chef, you had to be the relative of a great chef in those days. And so I, uh, the next thing was court reporting because there were so many court reporters in my neighborhood, a little, little conclave called Brighton Beach in Brooklyn on the water. And uh, one of the best teachers ever, who's still alive, 94 years old, Manny Grotsky, was a wonderful teacher, motivated people, rolled up his sleeves and forced you to read back, and he's a great guy. And uh, so we all knew court reporting. and. And graduating from the local Brighton Beach Billiard Academy, I went right to court reporting school. And in those days, there were less requirements, so you can finish in sort of an expedited fashion. And I was in and out of school in seven months. I was very fortunate to do that. But it was my mother who, who was my catalyst. Unfortunately, it had to do with finances, and we took our entire family bank account, which was $600, and they gave it to me to go to court reporting school for one year. That's 12 months at $50 a month. I finished in seven, and the remaining money was used to buy my first stenograph machine. And uh, I thought it was my first Cadillac. It was, couldn't be any better. And I, uh, it was from there, it was just you know one job after another. What was your first job? Working for uh, $80 per week for the city of New York, the Comptroller's office, I was a hearing reporter. We typed our own notes on an old manual typewriter. Of course, we played jokes on each other, and we removed the, put the Y where the L was, and made other people type incorrectly. But it was, it was all, all well and good, because everyone came out um, pretty good at what they did. And, and from there, you went to? From there, I left New York, and I went to New Jersey and commuted by train to different locations to be a medical reporter in workers' compensation courts. In those days, it was workmen's compensation courts. And um, I had a good medical background and suffering from various um, diseases, mo ma mainly that of being a hypochondriacal. Due to all the medical knowledge that I had, I had to leave that and become a general freelancer. And ultimately, uh, I worked for a wonderful firm called Cabot, Battaglia, and Hammer, and uh, just wonderful people. And then I uh, became entrepreneurial and went out on my own. And I never regretted a day in any of the practice I've done. Uh, it gave me direction. It gave me value. Whatever I had from my home, I applied to my profession. Uh, I love it. It changed my life from what could have been a loser to a superficial winner. What? specific personal or professional benefits do you think you've derived from reporting? The benefits is a more worldly knowledge. As a reporter, you're usually the silent person in the courtroom or deposition suite. I've always tried to stay away from the mundane uh, negligence matter and go into something more sophisticated in this corporate litigation. And as real time evolved, became involved in the deaf community. And just my sphere of exposure became so multifaceted that I'm thankful every day. I'm no better than anyone else. I'm just a real thankful guy because someday we're all heading for some bad news and before it comes, I just want to appreciate every day and enjoy my true commitment to excellence, which is the people, the family and friends that I have. And I'm just a, a very lucky person and I don't want luck to run out. What has given you the most pride in being a reporter? Uh, probably not what most people say, which is uh, rendering the spoken word to paper and commitment to excellence as a reporter. Uh, the most pride I have is probably uh, my commitment to quality people around me. And I don't think I'd have the same 
a skewed index if I weren't a reporter. I think the exposure that I have, the fact that we do listen all day, we don't hear, we listen, and we, we listen to the stories and we apply them to our personal lives, and we don't even know what's going on, but by osmosis we learn. And those people who don't learn in this profession are, are wasting in this profession because court reporting has so much to offer. Uh, it, sounds like, well, it sounds like a sales pitch, and it's not. Because unfortunately, people don't know about court reporting. And I don't know, I don't think we're doing a good enough job in getting the word out there. There's so many vehicles of exposure that we could be using that we're not. During the time that you were reporting, or uh, contemporaneously, was there a time when there was the right time to be in reporting? In other words, do you feel there was uh, a golden era of reporting, or is that yet to come? The right time to be in reporting was when I began, but the more exciting time was when computerization entered the field. It was, it was so rewarding to be in it in the early 60s, when everyone in court reporting spoke about, each case was an important case. I, I remember taking my first criminal case. I thought I was on top of the world. I, I was exposed to a criminal trial. It couldn't have been any more important to me. What I miss, and as we get older, we all miss the naivete that we once had, the excitement of getting on a, the, your first airplane, of falling in love, of loving your profession, of, of knowing the romance of a railroad, which I know is one of your uh, pets in life. It, it's beautiful, the sound of the wheel. Uh, I don't get that naivete any longer. Checking into a hotel, getting on an airplane is, is mundane, is, is is a complaint versus an excitement. So I, I look to the excitement of the reporter of the future and say, he or she, uh, to set up your tripod the very first time, that nervous, I want to be nervous that I'm not nervous any longer. <clears throat> Other than my uh, comments to you over the years that I thought you would be a wonderful thespian, have you yourself ever fancied yourself doing something uh, else, another profession perhaps? Oh, Jerry, you have loaded questions and since we know each other and we're contemporaries, uh, we'll be upfront with each other. Um, I think if I could structure my undisciplined future life, it would be to be an author of valuable periodicals or books. Um, I'm, I'm writing a story now about my wife's cousin who was dying with a bad liver and someone stepped up to the plate and gave him a liver just three weeks ago, and they're both doing fine. And this person wants no credit and could really use a lift. And this is an American hero. So writing a book about him is important. Writing a book about a, a person in prison for life who didn't commit any murder or even crime is another uh, pet. I'm, I'm back in college now and taking uh, graduate courses in um, creative writing but having never achieved a baccalaureate degree, one of my failings, I um, used some influence to get into a writing course. But uh, I, I, would have, I wouldn't have done anything over again. In other words, reporting would have been there at the very beginning because the foundation that I built, and we all built, has just been a very beneficial thing. And we're not even addressing the word finance, which is great. We shouldn't even talk about money because I'm sick and tired of hearing people say, isn't there a lot of money in court reporting? And my answer usually is, there's a lot of money in pencils. Dixon Ticonderoga did a very good job.